With chronic granulomatous disease, granulomatous refers to the development of small nodules called granulomas. Granulomas are collections of immune cells, especially phagocytes, which cluster together when they can't kill invading pathogens, like bacteria or fungi. So chronic granulomatous disease is an immunodeficiency where phagocytes are unable to kill pathogens, and instead they form granulomas throughout the body. Normally when a pathogen invades the body, phagocytes, like neutrophils and macrophages, are the first ones on the scene. When a phagocyte detects a pathogen, it stretches itself out as if it had two little arms. These little arms wrap around the pathogen and seal themselves back up, forming a vesicle inside the phagocyte called a phagosome. Because the phagosome is lined by what was previously part of the phagocyte's surface membrane, Whatever structures were previously surface-bound, like this protein complex called NADPH oxidase, ends up being inside the phagosome. The phagocyte also has other organelles, like lysosomes, which are full of digestive enzymes that can destroy a pathogen. When a lysosome fuses with a phagosome, it forms a phagolysosome, and lysosomal enzymes start to destroy the pathogen. The lysosomal enzymes also activate NADPH oxidase which came from the phagosome, causing NADPH to undergo oxidation and lose two of its electrons, which reduces them to superoxide ions, or O2-. Another enzyme, superoxide dismutase, can take these ions and combine them with hydrogen ions to form hydrogen peroxide, or H2O2. This process of producing superoxide ions and hydrogen peroxide is called the respiratory burst, these ions and molecules destroy pathogens by damaging their cell membranes and proteins. In chronic granulomatous disease, there's a mutation in the genes that code for NADPH oxidase, so the enzyme is less functional. One common mutation is an autosomal recessive mutation, which is where both copies of the chromosome need to have the same mutation for the disease to happen. Another common mutation is an X-linked recessive mutation, and since men only have one X chromosome, they get the disease. Whereas since women have two X chromosomes, they only get the disease if both their X chromosomes are affected, which is way less likely. Regardless of the underlying mutation, when there's a decrease in the amount of functional NADPH oxidase, it's bad news for the phagocytes. Now, when they swallow up a pathogen and eventually form a phagolysosome, there are fewer superoxide ions and less hydrogen peroxide so the respiratory burst is weaker. This makes it tough for individuals with chronic granulomatous disease to kill certain pathogens, specifically fungi and bacteria that have an enzyme called catalase, and are therefore called catalase-positive pathogens. Catalase breaks down hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen before it gets a chance to damage the pathogen. Normally, there's enough hydrogen peroxide being produced that catalase-positive pathogens can only break down some of it, but in the case of chronic granulomatous disease, there's already so little hydrogen peroxide that catalase-positive pathogens can break down all of it. That's why the most common pathogens in chronic granulomatous disease are catalase-positive. And these are Burkholderia, Nocardia, Pasteurelia, Listeria, Aspergillus, Candida, E. coli, Staphylococcus, and Serratia, which you can remember with the handy mnemonic Cats have been places. Now, pathogens that don't get killed linger within phagocytes and occasionally break free. And over time, that attracts even more phagocytes that engulf the pathogens, as well as other immune cells like T lymphocytes. Over time, the immune cells gather up to stop the pathogen from spreading, forming little clusters called granulomas that have phagocytes in the center with living pathogens inside them. In terms of symptoms, chronic granulomatous disease can cause recurrent pneumonia or recurrent skin and soft tissue infections like cellulitis and abscesses, as well as bone and joint infections like osteomyelitis and septic arthritis. It's also common to see bacteremia or fungemia, which is when the pathogens that don't get killed find their way into the bloodstream and kind of just hang out. The most common way to diagnose chronic granulomatous disease is by testing neutrophil function in a blood sample. A very old test is the nitroblue tetrazoleum test, which is when a colorless dye called nitroblue tetrazoleum is added to the blood sample. 
If the respiratory burst is working properly, superoxide ions are produced and react with the dye, changing its color to a deep blue. A newer test is the dihydrorhodamine 1 2 3 test, which is where dihydrorhodamine 1 2 3 is added to the blood sample. If levels of NADPH oxidase are normal, then the enzyme will oxidize dihydrorhodamine 1 2 3, causing it to fluoresce or shine. How much or how little it shines is directly proportional to the amount of functional NADPH oxidase. Treatment of chronic granulomatous disease involves prophylactic antibiotics and antifungals that target the most common infectious organisms. Typically, that includes trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, as well as itraconazole. In addition, interferon gamma can be given because it stimulates the production of superoxide and phagocytes. In some cases, a hematopoietic stem cell transplantation can be done to wipe out the non-functional immune cells and introduce new immune cells that don't have the genetic mutation. All right, as a quick recap, chronic granulomatous disease is an autosomal recessive or X-linked recessive disease that causes a mutation in NADPH oxidase. As a result, phagocytes are unable to create superoxide and hydrogen peroxide. And without this respiratory burst, they struggle to kill catalase-positive pathogens, which can be remembered with the mnemonic cats have been places, and include Burkholderia, Nicardia, Pastorelia, Listeria, Aspergillus, Candida, E. coli, Staphylococcus, and Serratia. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.